darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm doing another Top 5 Wednesday, although not a Wednesday, sorry. This week's topic is our favorite magic systems, so I interpreted this as being like tropes or ways that magic are used within books, not necessarily specific books that have good magic systems in them, although I'm going to talk about those also. So the first of my favorite ways that magic is like introduced into a fantasy novel is that there's a gift. Like, there's this one-time magical gift or curse laid on a person. We see this a lot in fairy tales, so I'm specifically thinking of Ella Enchanted, where she's cursed to always be obedient and obey everybody's uh, demands. Or Beauty and the Beast, where the beast gets cursed and becomes this monster and his castle becomes enchanted. But, like, the rest of the world outside of this curse doesn't really have a lot of magic other than we're told that there is a sorceress somewhere. Or Aladdin's lamp and becoming this method of being able to um, grant wishes within what would be normally a very not magical world. So I like this trope um, because it could just be our world. It could happen anywhere. Um, and you could just suddenly have magic without being this whole complicated system. There could just be this one magical object or this one magic wish that you're granted. My second favorite magic trope is that magic is just science that we don't know how it works yet. So we see this in Discworld where it's kind of like magic is this catch-all for all the scientific stuff happening in this society, but they don't really have a strong foundation of what science is, so maybe their magic is just science, especially with like the magic that the wizards are doing. Uh, we also see this in Doctor Who where we encounter a either super advanced race where everything they do seems like magic to us, or primitive society where the doctor's technology or the technology of the companion seems very um, magical. But really, it's just science. And this definitely shows up in the Thor movies, where all the magic of Asgard is just explained as, well, it's science that you just haven't caught you to yet. You know, wait a couple of thousand years and you'll be there. So it's fun to think about what our science, how magical and amazing it would seem to somebody in the past, but also it's cool that it, like, it makes magic seem more realistic. <laughs> like, just because we haven't figured out how to do it yet with science doesn't mean that something couldn't happen. My third favorite way that magic shows up in books is that you have somebody apprenticing in magic. So somebody is the student learning magic from somebody who is more advanced. So we have the wizard or the witch who has a ton of ability teaching somebody else. So this shows up in The Sword in the Stone by T.H. White where we have Merlin showing and educating Arthur. Um, we see it in Uprooted where Agnesca is learning magic from the dragon. Um, Mort is learning about how to reap the souls from the Grim Reaper from death in Discworld. And we see Sabrina the Teenage Witch, at least in the television show in the 90s, um, learning magic from her aunts, and it's very much a home-based learning. It's not an elaborate school system. It's more one-on-one, -on -one, here's how you do stuff, let me teach you. I kind of like this nurturing aspect to it, and kind of is how I vision magic getting passed down from generation to generation. So there's an appeal to it, that it's just this folksy thing that just happens, and let me just show you how to do it, and you have this great teacher showing somebody else how to do it or how to use it or to learn something from it. So I really, really like apprenticeship. The fourth one I have on here is that there's some magical hidden world out there. So our world may be perfectly normal and mundane and magic doesn't exist in it, but if you can find the right door or the right way, you can get to this magical place where everything is just magic. The Wizard of Oz, the Chronicles of Narnia, Alice in Wonderland, these are all just like you find the right door and there's a world where anything you ever wanted could possibly happen. Animals can talk and flowers can sing and there are witches and there's flying monkeys and just anything could happen. And we also have the idea that you could have it hidden within our own world. So there's just this pocket of a hidden society that isn't like out there. So we have Neverwhere or An American Gods by Neil Gaiman where there is magical elements kind of bubbling beneath the surface that most of society doesn't know anything about. Or Enchanted Ink, where Katie and 
gets this job working for a company where she's creating magic spells, but like for actual wizards and stuff. And it's existed the whole time. She's just never known about it. And so this is really appealing because somebody who has no magical abilities whatsoever could suddenly find themselves in a world where you're surrounded by magic, where your coworker is a troll, or there are rats that sing, or I mean, like, it's just there. Like, you just have to find the right door, the right way, or the right job, and you could find magic. And my number one favorite magic system, the way that magic shows up in books, is in magical schools. So I'm thinking Hogwarts and the Harry Potter books, uh, Break Bells and the Magicians, Watford and Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, The Unseen University and Discworld. These are all places where people who have some latent and magical abilities go to perfect them and learn their craft and build on them. I really like the structure of the schools. It's kind of appealing. A lot of these are younger kids or teenagers going to learn uh, magic. Um, but really just the academia surrounding it and the fact that you could study it and learn it. And if you read the right books or you mix the right ingredients together, you could have a potion like that you could learn magic and that it can be educated um, and taught that way. But also it's a school and you have students and the complications of student student relationships or students and teachers or the relationships between teachers or administrations and like the library filled with magical books. Like, all of the trappings of the school is really appealing and interesting. Those were my top five ways that magic manifests itself and works within books, especially fantasy. So that may not have been the way that most people interpreted this top five ones today, but that's what I went with. Um, let me know in the comments below what are your favorite ways that magic shows up. And do you have favorite examples of anything that I talked about? Because I only listed a few books for each of these. You're welcome. There's a top five Wednesday topic again. Um, as always, the complete list of books that I've talked about is in the description below. Also, the link to the Goodreads group is in the description below if you want to join in and do top five Wednesdays also. So peace out. I love you guys and keep reading. Bye.